Entering into the entrance hallway of the apartment, Simone tentatively holds up her hand to inform the other two women to wait. Something wrong? Chuck asks, before looking down at Jerome, who sits at her side vigilantly. The animal's ears perk up and nostrils flare silently, keeping her own tabs on the situation. Hope not, but... Simone replies in concerned thought. While I was stranded on the Grat homeworld and just getting to know Miki, she was chased and attacked by big burly dogs like Zroom here. Not the same breed, of course, but I want to check in with her before waltzing in, you know. Her only experience with dogs being like that, she probably needs a warning, she informs. Chuck's eyes widen slightly, and she quickly nods. Ow, of course. Yes, that's a good idea, she agrees, before placing a lower limb on the mutt's big head. Surprised you accepted taking it. You seem very scared of it at first, Sonma comments, having been keeping her own distance from the animal thus far. She's a little scary, certainly. Definitely intimidating in size and stature, Chuck grunts. But that look in her eyes... She is without a doubt a very good-natured girl, she says, while gently petting the dog. I think so too, but we're going to have to be careful introducing her to everyone, and make sure she knows who's a friend. Don't want her thinking any of them approaching you is of concern, Simone says, before walking ahead to enter the apartment. You guys wait here, I'll just be a sec. Entering the apartment proper, Simone looks around the circular center hub space. There's a faint smell of pizza in the air, as the empty boxes are still resting on the counter island in the kitchen area. However, there is no sight of either Grat or Terran outside their dishevelled mess in the centre media couch. Simone would have felt a bit more concerned with how late the three seemed to be sleeping in, but the evidence around reveals that they have just been up late having fun while they can. However, knowing that she still can't surprise them with the pooch, she walks over to the Grat's room and knocks her knuckles against it. Though when Troy answers it, dressed in nothing but a blanket, Simone looks over to the other room doors, confused. Oh, morning dude. Sorry, did I forget whose room is whose? She asks in a chuckle. Nope, the sheepish man replies, as he rubs the sleep from his eyes. Um, shoot, yeah, um, Miki and Nodrin are just waking up too. Need me to get him out for you? He says as his cheeks redden. Simone's eyes gradually expand in realisation as she tilts her head enough to see the partially collapsed fortress of pillows and blankets. Nordrin pokes the head and upper torso out from the draping wall in a stretch, while another pair of loving grat hands massage their torso in the usual process of separation. Hmm. Morning good, Simone, Nordrin groggily utters, as they more fully pull away from their softly chittering partner in a crawl out. Returning her eyes back to Troy to grant the nude Nodrin a bit of privacy, Simone clears her throat and rubs the back of her head. Wow, it looks like you guys had a hell of a time. Um, congrats? It seems like it went well. Right, uh, yeah. Simone rambles, with several streams of thoughts going through her mind, but she eventually snaps to it by raising her voice slightly. Miki, Nodrin, I need you two to get dressed and step out ASAP. There's something I need to run by you guys before Chat comes into the apartment, she calls out to the Grat, before winking at Troy and stepping away, and scavenging one of the few remaining cold slices of pizza in the fridge. Okay, Miki's voice replies, before Troy closes the door to get dressed himself. Simone updates Chuck on the situation with her lens, as she leans against the kitchen island, and only waits for about a minute before the three hurry on out more appropriately garbed. For the most part... Troy is still shirtless as he wanders out, and approaches the kitchen area and starts digging through the cupboards. Miki and Nodrin run up to the island by Simone, and sit up on the stalls. The female wears a grey shirt that's way too big for her, answering why Troy's outfit is incomplete. Well, I'm not seeing much, guys. We can try ordering in again. But there's enough to work with here for some quick and dirty pancakes. Not seen any syrup or jam, but I think I can make something real quick with these frozen fruit packs in the freezer. Maybe I'll just throw them into the batter and see if it works out, Troy tells the duo, seeming to have picked up a conversation they were having while getting dressed. Oh, and bacon. At least, uh, something that looks like bacon. Definitely not from a Terran animal, so I can't be sure if it will cook the same. Sounds much good, Nodrin agrees, 
as they rest their head in their hands, watching the half-dressed Terran get to work, very much enjoying the show. What we need to discuss? Meek inquires the nearby redhead. Simone nods before finishing off the slice in her hand. Chuck and I brought some new friends back home with us and I wanted to give you a heads up. Probably should have messaged ahead, but let's just say we were a bit distracted. One of them is a Varuk named Sonla. She's a bit of an infiltration expert and I have a good idea of what she can do in case things don't go to plan. That said, hold back on details with her for now, Simone says, to which the grad nod. And... The other is a security service animal that was gifted to Chuck by the Zatok ambassador. Long story. And I thought we had a wild night. Did you even manage to have that date? Troy says over his shoulder, as he mixes wet and dry ingredients in a bowl. Yes, actually, it was amazing. All this other stuff happened afterwards. Anyway, Miki, Nordrin, I want to clear it with you before bringing the animal in, because it's a dog. Miki, I know for a fact that your introduction to dogs was harrowing to say the least, because they were the animals those Gaia people used while invading your home. Simone addresses the two green folk, seeing a bit of confirmation of her concern, in the responding fearful grat eyes looking to the entrance door of the apartment. The four-legged beast with fur? Miki inquires a bit nervously. Yep, but I assure you that this one will mean you no harm. Those dogs that attacked you before were raised and trained to do so, but dogs themselves are domesticated animals that are broadly safe to be around, as long as you don't make yourself a threat to them. And even then, they may just cower from you rather than fight. That said, Chak's new dog, Zroom, is trained to be a kind of bodyguard. It's important to know to not act aggressively towards Chak while she's on duty, alright? However, I'd like to socialise her with you guys here in a sec, while she's off duty. You know, to make sure she understands you two are friends, and permitted near Chak in times of crisis. Is it okay with you two to let them in? Simone elaborates. So, this dog is nice? Miki questions for full confirmation. Chuck called her a sweetheart herself, and I completely agree. As long as you don't bum rush Chuck for some reason as soon as she walks in, you'll be perfectly fine. Just don't stare into her eyes until she's comfortable around you. For dogs, direct eye contact can be seen as a threat, Simone answers. Ready? Miki blinks as she watches the door for a moment longer. Yes, it's okay to bring them in, she nods. The redhead pats Miki's shoulder reassuringly and messages Chuck, informing her that she is clear to enter. Everyone within the apartment turns to get a look as the entrance opens up to the Kali princess, holding a leash to an animal that weighs more than she does. Miki relatively takes hold of Nodrin's hand, but otherwise remains calm, as the dog is brought closer to the kitchen area. Chuck stops and pulls up a list of provided commands that the canine is trained in. Zroom at ease. Safe zone, she states firmly, hoping that she did it correctly. Immediately, Zroom's posture loosens and even becomes a little wiggly, as she looks down and begins sniffing the ground and nearby furniture within range of the leash's allowance. Although the leash straightens out, the gentle creature doesn't pull against her owner's grip, instead simply shifting her focus to something else. Quickly, that focus comes upon the two grats still sitting on stools. Coming closer with caution, Zroom approaches the strangers carefully. Lower your hands with palms out. Let her say hi first, Simone advises. Nodding, Miki slowly obliges, twitching slightly, as the animal starts to sniff her clawed hands. Then, in a side rub against Miki's legs, the dog opens its mouth in a relaxed grin, exposing her tongue. Feeling like permission is granted, Miki starts to pet Zroom's shaggy fur along her vertical back. Nodrin then lowers their hands as well for another sniff inspection, before being enthusiastically allowed to join in on the petting. Miki's nerves gradually fade, as the animal proves to be indeed very friendly and well-mannered. Nothing like the animals that intended to tear her to shreds way back when. Hello, Shroom, she says in a relieving sigh. At the sound of her name being spoken by this new person, the dog arches her head back and up at the grat female. Her expression being only what can be defined as goofy sweetness with big expressive eyes and a heavy swing of her happy tail. 
Simone covers her mouth, trying to not snort a laugh upon seeing the dog's dorky nature. Removing her bag from her shoulder, she turns to look at Sonla, who has been very quietly looking around the apartment and the folks within. And this is Sonla. Sonla, this is Nodrin, Miki, and Troy. The redhead introduces with a moving hand gesture. The monkey-like lizard stood up from walking on her knuckles to give everyone a wave. Hi, she says a bit awkwardly. Welcome to the circus, Troy greets, as he pours his pancake fruit mixture into a heated and buttered pan. Leaving it for just a moment, he leans over on the island and gives the Veruk a big smile. Want any pancakes? I might have made a bit too much batter while trying to even out the texture, he offers. I'm an obligate carnivore, so no thanks, Son replies, as she settles back on her thickly scaled knuckles. Oh, sorry, right. My bad, Troy chuckles, as he rubs the back of his neck. Uh, what about some bacon? The animal is, uh... He turns around to closely read the chilled packaging for the answer. Premium cloned Lomov? Not really sure how premium clone stuff is, but we got it. The man flips the package in the air with one hand, while the other gives the lizard lady a thumbs up. Yes! Sandler immediately replies, as she manoeuvres up to the remaining stool by the island, and adjusts it to compensate for her shorter stature. You got it, Troy says with a finger gun, before turning around once more to tend to his cooking. After a short while, seeing the dog is handling the situation well, Chuck takes off the leash. Zroom takes this opportunity to step away from the grat and further explore the space around her. She's very nice, Miki says, as she watches the animal sniff around everything that was in her path. She play or no? The grat inquires curiously. Oh yeah, I imagine she'd be happy to play things like fetch and tug of war. In fact, Chuck already ordered toys, food, a bed and a waste pad system to be eventually delivered to the quip chap. Simone answers, before her fiancé pressed up against her in a side hug. It's only sensible to be prepared now rather than later, Chuck defends in a chuckle, as she keeps an eye on the pooch. I just hope the children will like her. I'm sure they will, the redhead replies, as she gently rubs the Callie's back. Meanwhile, Sonda finds herself staring up directly at Nodrin with an unreadable expression. You... alright? Nodrin asks. Why do you have four eyes? Sonla bluntly counter questions. Ah, uh, um, because I was born with four, as most Grat are. Four eyes are not all that strange when it comes to other species. Truba, Carve, and Hallow are examples, Nodrin answers, confused by the question. Well, duh, but I mean, why does your species have four eyes evolution wise? Sonla clarifies. Carve and Hallow have four to see different life spectrums. And Dillo needed six to look upwards for falling debris and sandstorms and cliffsides. Oon and I have eight. I think that is because they needed good depth perception. Ow. Oh, so you much study biology science? Nodrin assumes. No, it's just kind of creepy to look at without context. Sondler bluntly responds with a shrug. Nodrin leans back a bit, finding themselves a bit offended. Much rude. But if it make you comfortable to be around us, then I'll answer the best I can. Sorry, but yes, it'll help, Sonda says. Although to the grat, her tone can stand to be a bit more apologetic. Very well. They help get more clear vision in dark places. Mostly they help us with close inspection and far distant seeing, Norton explains, before pointing at their pair of eyes furthest from the center of their face. But outer eyes are much special. Our ancestors were aquatic animals, and so Grat's outer eyes still have extra clear lids to see underwater. How? Aquatic? Sonla questions. Where did head fur come from then? Are you, like, mammalian? She adds, with more genuine curiosity. I don't know, Nodrin admits. Grat study past ancestors much, but we still know little, though hope new tech from the stars can help with all our sciences. I saw Terra an article that said we closely resemble, um... Mickey inserts herself into the conversation, before trailing off as she forgets the classification used. One moment, she utters, as she navigates her lens to find the article she found. Ah! Synapsids! Not exactly like, but much comparison. So we are compared to mammal-like reptiles. 
Sonla blinks before looking back, as the roar of bacon hits a hot pan. Ha! Huh. Neat, she replies. Varug can't really swim very well. We tend to sink, and even if we don't, we are too top-heavy, so our heads get stuck under water. Very funny to see, but also sad. But we are really good at climbing. We can hold on to and dagger from things for long periods of time. But not holding on to speeding shuttle roos, huh? Simone teases, as she manoeuvres her positioning to get a better line of sight on the sizzling bacon. N no Well, maybe. If it didn't get cold so fast, Sonna says. Troy looks back at his fellow Terran with a furrowed brow. What did you guys get yourselves into? He says, as he breaks into a bewildered laugh. I'm sure you'll know soon enough when you get the chance to look at the news, but by the end of it, Chuck managed to secure overwhelming Zartuk support for her and her efforts to take back the throne. Like, military support. Granted, they have a lot to gain from it, but so do we, Simone reveals, as she finds herself a bit closer to the plate, where the man was putting down the greasy strips of crispy goodness. Chuck then lets out a genuinely human giggle that borders on outright laughter. Confused, Troy looks up to Simone, then to his other side where Chuck is looking. Having somehow sneaked up on him, Droom sits there while gazing up at him with big pleading eyes, with a little line of drool dripping from her maw. Noticing that he is boxed in, he turns to Simone and aims his tongs out at her. You already pillaged our leftovers, you can wait a few minutes for bacon, he states sternly, in his fake parental tone, before turning to the dog. Sorry, Papa, way too much sodium for you, it'll upset your guts real bad, he sweetly apologises. As he addresses the canine, Simone swiftly reaches over and silently snatches two hot strips from the plate. Now a tree's back before he is able to notice. You mother- Troy laughs, once he sees both Simone and Chuck, snacking on the stolen goods, but knowing he would do the exact same, drops it immediately. Simone smirks in victory, as she wanders over to the circular centre couch, to make herself comfortable, as they all wait for their other Terran comrades, to return from their own mysterious mission. Well, that wasn't a complete disaster, Brandy mutters, as she strikes ahead of Thorn and Devin, with her arms crossed while marching into the apartment entrance hallway. Hard to believe we weren't caught after that water tank collapsed. Almost didn't have the time to scrub us from all the crossing security footage, Devin groans in a low grumble. Getting caught? How about, oh, you know, nearly crushing that tanker shuttle into a residential area? Brandy snaps back. Not my fault that the pilot passed out, Devin argues. Sort of was. That kind of happens when you jump scare a Zerna from behind like you did, Brandy counters. It was either lose the target or try to convince the Zerna to turn left, Devin sighs, before he feels a mechanical hand press on the back of his shoulder. Pushing him to hurry up, Thorn catches up with Brandy before he plants his other hand. Hmm, not our best work, but we got the bastard and actually convinced the Squalor Ambassador to help us out in our little operation here. Other than some spilled water, we managed to pull it up without a hitch. I say we learn from the experience and get what's further down the trail. Remember what's at stake. Yeah, you're right, but still. It's those stakes that make every mistake feel like I've wronged the entire universe. Like it's heavier than it has any right to be, Brandy replies, as she reaches the door. One fuck up and who knows how many people will be hurt from it down the line. Aye. But in the grand scheme of it all, your actions have had the same weight your entire life, because it led you here doing what you're doing. Still, you're right. It's a lot to bear on the heart, Thorn grants. My advice? Take a note from Simone's book. Just keep moving forward and rest in the arms of whoever you want to hold you. I honestly don't know how she copes. It drove me into a downward spiral of stress and paranoia going through half of what she has. The woman huffs, as she reaches to open the door via indicator. Don't compromise who you are, and preserve your capability to love throughout all the hell life will march you through. It'll hurt, but it's worth it because that's how you win life, the old man states, right before the door opens. Yo, about time. You guys want some cold pancakes? I can reheat them if you like. Troy cheers from the couch, with two grat resting at his sides. I hope you free have moved from the couch at some point, Brandy says, with an exaggerated eye roll. Have a good night? Yeah, we did. The man answers both of Brandy's sentences at once. 
I'm going to set up to get our finalized planning underway. Ten minutes, Devin notifies, as he peels off to his room. Good. I hear we have a new member to the crew, Thorn says, as he strides in with his hands on his hips. As if summoned, Sola's head peeks out from behind the other side of the couch. That's me, Master Infiltrator Sola at your service, the Varuk introduces herself, now standing proudly upon the headrest. Master, eh? Good. We're definitely going to need a master's handiwork in our little operation, Thorn chuckles, as he scratches at his five o'clock shadow. We were also told that we have a doggy, Brandy asks, as she looks around for any trace of the animal. Yep, Simone and Chuck were just showing her off to their kids in the core, Troy explains, as he thumbs to their room. As if summoned by Troy's opposable digit, the door opens with Chuck once again holding the leash of the dog. Welcome back. I hope everything is alright? The princess inquires, as she guides Room out to meet Brandy first. At ease. Safe zone, she reminds the animal. Why, hello there. Oh my goodness, I've never seen a breed quite like hers before. Like a big pity and... African painted dog, maybe? Has the colour at least. Definitely some others mixed in there too. Hint of Mastiff or something else chunkier. But still... All the pretty in a fluffy package, Brandy says, as she scratches under the dog's white neck, which is very much approved. Though the angle of Zroom's ears changed to one of caution and alertness, turning her head towards the old man who had yet to approach, she released a low growl. It's okay, Zroom. Safe zone, Chuck assures. But the animal stare remained intense on the cybernetic man. Seeing the confusion and concern on everyone's faces, Thorn raises his hand. Don't worry about it. Dogs and I don't really mix. A shame, really, but it's something to do with how my non-organic bits emit a sound they find very agitating. Like a walking, annoying dog whistle. I'll see if Devin can do anything about that, but in the meantime it's best if the dog and I keep separate, he explains. Oh, damn. Yeah, I guess dogs never really approached you before. Bummer. I guess while we sort things out, we'll have a chill in our room, Simone says apologetically. And I'll bunk up when she needs some running around time, Thorne nods back appreciatively. She's downright adorable, by the way. As Jack turns back around to lead Room back in her room for the time being, Troy's eyes go wide and he points at Simone dramatically. Shit, dude, I almost forgot. Someone came asking for you by name, he reveals. Looking to him with a bit of fear in her eyes, Simone gave him her full attention. Who? she demands. Don't worry, I never confirmed you were actually here and she seemed... not like the people we were up against. She was a tall thin lady who said she was a friend of yours from your academy days. She left a contact card and before you ask, yes I scanned the hell out of it. She seemed to really really want to talk to you, the man explains. As he feels around his pockets and when he finds nothing, he shoves his hand down the crevice of the couch, until he victoriously pulls the card out of the furniture void. He holds it out, to which Simone accepts hesitantly. Yeah, okay, she mumbles, while looking at either side of the card. Just be careful. Our options of people who we can trust from your military career are thin at best, Thorn cautions. I know, and I think I know who it is. Honestly, I have no clue how involved she is, if at all, but it's quite the coincidence she shows up now of all times, Simone admits. Is she going to be a problem for what we're planning to do? Brandy asks. If she has nothing to do with the Terran terrorists, then I don't think so. I'd ignore this completely, but I ought to at least know what she wants to talk about. Clearly she knows I'm here anyway. No point in avoiding it, especially if she seeks me out during our operation. Regardless of her intentions, we're asking for trouble. The other big issue, of course, is that she's still with the Terran Union. This could just be a ploy to get me arrested and into Union custody, the redhead says, as she taps the card in the palm of her other hand. Then wherever she wants to meet, I'll come with you, Chuck announces, as she returns to her Terran. I'll even request for Ambassador Jreek's attendance if possible, or at the very least have a representative of his there to show that arresting you would be a terrible political nightmare for the Union, the princess adds sternly, with an affirmative nod. Damn, you're so hot when you get like this, Simone replies in jest, to alleviate her own nerves, but yeah, I appreciate it. 
But first, before any of that potential shit show, Thorne says as he crosses his arms, it's time we put our main plan to paper. We have a precedent to possibly kidnap and hold at gunpoint after all. Ow! Wow! That's a bit more than less than legal, Solomon mutters with wide eyes. Good thing I'm a master of explosives too, 